From a trucker hat to a crown, the world watched in 2009 as ex-personal trainer Daniel Westling was quickly absorbed into the Swedish royal family. But who is this Prince Daniel guy anyway? As a child, Daniel Westling probably didn't imagine himself ever living in a palace as a prince. He was raised in an unassuming rural town north of Stockholm, Sweden, along with his sister Anna, where grassy fields and blue skies were as common as currency. Westling began life as a sports fan, spent some time in the Swedish army, and later became a personal trainer as well as a gym owner, according to Hello. His father worked in social services, and his mom found employment with the Swedish post office. Westling and a business partner started a gym in Stockholm called Master Training to establish a place where celebrities of all stripes, including royals, could work out without having to worry about drawing attention from the general public. Master training was an obvious choice for a Swedish princess looking for a place to work out, so it's not too surprising that Westling met Princess Victoria there. Soon, the future prince of Sweden became her personal trainer. But there's so much more to the story. Sadly, Victoria had been battling a terrible eating disorder for quite a long time. She didn't say much in public about the disorder while she was struggling with it. But on a Swedish television program made in honor of her 40th birthday, Victoria revealed that in addition to wanting to attend Yale, she'd also traveled to the U.S. at age 20 to seek help for the eating disorder. In the U.S., I got professional help, which was really important for me. Just learning to put words to feelings and thus be able to set limits and to not push myself too much, I wanted all the time so much more than I could do or could be. But Victoria was not fully healed when she joined Westling's gym in 2001. According to The Guardian, Daniel Westling was instrumental in Victoria's recovery. Despite the couple's obvious affection for each other, Daniel Westling was still a commoner from the Swedish suburbs, and Princess Victoria was heir apparent to the throne. According to the Sydney Morning Herald, Westling didn't share the elite accent of the royals and their posh associates, and Victoria's friends mocked him. Perhaps more importantly, King Gustav wanted Victoria to marry a certain well-heeled Danish prince and was in no hurry to concede to her union with the gym owner. Johan T. Lindwall, a Swedish journalist who has written extensively about the royals, claimed that Queen Sylvia had confided to friends that she didn't expect Victoria to stay with Westling. Nor was the Swedish public particularly enamored with Westling or how he presented himself. As Daniel Nilhen, a royal correspondent, explained to the Irish Times, in the beginning, the public was a little hesitant about Daniel because he was not royal because he was a personal trainer. He had this slacker style. He wore trucker caps and jeans. To marry somebody like that uh, 30 years ago, uh, she would have been thrown out of the royal family. But Westling and Victoria persisted, determined to follow their hearts regardless of what others thought. As we've all learned from observing Kate Middleton and Meghan Markle in London, appearance, manners, and decorum matter to royals and royal watchers. And in more cases than not, all eyes are on royals any time they step out into public. So Daniel Westling was given a royal makeover. Remember Eliza Doolittle and My Fair Lady? Well, Westling was subjected to a similar kind of training. He gained a new hairstyle, learned to dress like a prince, was tutored in various languages, including his native Swedish, and even schooled in various other princely behaviors, according to HuffPost. In 2008, royal watchers in Sweden couldn't help noticing that Westling had moved into an apartment in a section of the palace used as a rental property. Many speculated that the proximity to the royals had been arranged to help Daniel learn more quickly and effectively. Apparently, all the hard work paid off, because in February 2009, when news broke that Daniel Westling had given Princess Victoria a ring and she'd accepted, both King Gustav and Queen Sylvia gave their approval and welcomed Westling to the royal family. In a public statement, King Gustav said, In the past years, we have of course got to know Daniel and have understood that he is a young man who works hard and takes life seriously. It is of course a special day for us, but it is also a special day for Sweden. Queen Sylvia added, We welcome Daniel into our family with open arms. I view him as a man who is humble yet decisive, as well as judicious and wise. You are full of energy, considerate, and will make a wonderful husband for Victoria. The joyful engagement of Daniel Westling to Princess Victoria of Sweden after eight years of courtship was announced in 2009 on Sweden's TV4. Most of the video is in Swedish, but the body language alone makes it clear how much they care about each other. Victoria explained in English why it took so long to get engaged, saying, It did take some time. It is a quite different situation from most other situations. On the other hand, we're now very certain of where we stand today. According to Women's Weekly, Princess Victoria also told the press in Swedish that although she didn't feel a click when she first set eyes on Westling, Daniel and I had a great and well-founded friendship. It was a friendship that grew and turned into love. To which Westling added, Our friendship developed into love. It is the perfect personal chemistry. 
Finally, things for Daniel Westling and Princess Victoria seemed calmer. They were engaged, at peace with the king and queen, and excitedly planning their wedding. Then, Westling began to suffer from kidney malfunction and underwent a transplant. And because he was preparing to marry the heir apparent to the Swedish throne, he discussed his health scare with the public on Sweden's TV4 in May 2010. According to Sweden's The Local, which translated Westling's comments into English, he said, "...this is not something that is hereditary. It was not something I had suffered from or even noticed. My body has been cleansed. I have a new kidney that is cleaning the blood." Five years later, in 2015, Westling revealed that the kidney donor was his father, Ollie Westling. The 2010 ceremony uniting Daniel Westling and Princess Victoria was brief, and when it ended, the happy couple rode through the streets of Stockholm as a crowd of thousands cheered. Swedish sailors on ships in Stockholm's harbor saluted, and a formation of Swedish fighter planes flew overhead. And what's a royal wedding without royal attendees? Prince Edward and the Countess of Wessex were there, as well as dignitaries and royals from Japan, Norway, Jordan, and the Netherlands. Later on, at the wedding dinner, Daniel gave a beautiful speech about his wonderful new bride. He talked about Victoria's kindness and devotion to him, and how once, when she had to leave him on royal business for 30 days, she stayed up all night writing him 30 letters, one for each day they'd be apart. This romantic gesture is so typical of you, Victoria. It says everything about the loving person you are. Daniel also discussed how he went from being, quote, not a frog, but certainly not a prince. He told the crowd of dignitaries that his transformation could never have happened without the loving help of the king and queen. Prince Charming, indeed. When movie star Grace Kelly met Monaco's Prince Rainier in 1956, Life magazine proclaimed it the fairy tale wedding of the century. In 2000, Australian advertising exec Mary Donaldson met Frederick, the Crown Prince of Denmark, in a bar, and they married in 2004. And in Great Britain, Prince William married Kate Middleton, and Prince Harry married Meghan Markle. Why is the concept of commoners entering the ranks of royalty so fascinating? Before his marriage to Princess Victoria, Daniel Westling clearly understood the magnitude of what lay ahead for him. This commoner, at the moment when they are, are married, he will become prince and duke of Westergötland. And this has not happened since the medieval ages. Prior to his wedding in 2010, he told CNN, "...the queen's main task is to support the king, and in my case, it is to support the crown princess in their very important work. If I can do it in the same way the queen does, I would be more than satisfied. That is my goal, long term." When you are the spouse of the heir apparent to your country's throne, the public obviously can't resist hoping adorable royal children will sooner rather than later be part of the picture. So the country was naturally ecstatic when Princess Victoria announced her pregnancy and ultimately gave birth to Princess Estelle on February 23, 2012, who is now second in line to the Swedish throne. Prince Daniel announced to the Swedish press, "...this is a new situation, something you never experienced before. To deliver the baby is always associated with certain risks, but everything has gone exceptionally well." When child number two, a boy named Oscar, arrived on March 2, 2016, Daniel was equally delighted. According to Royal Central, both of the children are expected to attend the prestigious Campus Manila School in Stockholm. In his 12 years of marriage, Prince Daniel has never lost sight of his royal responsibilities. For example, following the recent death of Queen Elizabeth in England, Queen Sylvia and King Gustav traveled to Windsor to pay their respects, while Princess Victoria and Prince Daniel lit candles in Elizabeth's memory in Stockholm. But long before he was a prince, Daniel Westling was a young entrepreneur who dreamed of owning gyms. Hence, he has started a fellowship to help others realize their visions. According to the Royal Swedish Academy of Engineering Sciences, the idea of Prince Daniel's fellowship is to inspire young people to become entrepreneurs and to support ambitious young entrepreneurs in growing their businesses. Prince Daniel and Princess Victoria also take a keen interest in the health and well-being of Swedish youth. Through the Crown Princess Couples Foundation, they work to ensure good health and prevent exclusion of any child. Finally, Prince Daniel and Princess Victoria have launched another foundation, named after their daughter, Princess Estelle, to promote cultural activities throughout Sweden. If you are struggling with an eating disorder or know someone who is, help is available. Visit the National Eating Disorders Association website or contact Nita's Life Helpline at 1-800-931-2237. You can also receive 24-7 crisis support via text. Send Nita to 741-741.